I've been using Light AF backpacks since 2018. Since then, I've seen the company grow in popularity and it's not a surprise. There's a lot of customizability to these packs and they have absolutely, in my opinion at least, the best shoulder straps on the market. To be completely transparent before kicking off this review, Light AF did send me this pack free of charge, but isn't sponsoring or trying to pay me for a good review in any way. The owner did, however, want me to beat this pack up and test out the new features, and that's exactly what I did. Now, I have over 250 miles on this pack, and I'm ready to give my full review. This specific model is a Light AF Curve 30 liter, which means I have 30 liters of internal volume. So it's just a simple roll top enclosure, right? And it clips up at the top. That means that it's basically a cylinder with shoulder straps. That's the base model. You start like that and you add your customization options to it. You can add certain things like a trekking pole kit, you can add an ice axe loop, a bottom pocket, shoulder pockets, a whole bunch of things. And on top of that, you can get pretty much any color you've ever imagined and any kind of all these crazy patterns. I've seen Light AF make some pretty interesting packs and I love it because, and everybody has a personality while out on the trail. Now this is a 100% frameless pack. And what that means for you before purchasing something like this is you really gotta have your base weight dialed into about 10 to 12 pounds. Base weight is defined as your full pack weight minus any food, water, fuel, or any kind of other consumables that change throughout the trip. So up to 20 pounds can fit comfortably in this pack on your shoulders, but I wouldn't go any higher than that. Say you need an extra day of food, that's fine. This will still work for you. I would honestly just look at getting into a one inch webbing removable hip belt. So use it when you need it, take it off when you don't. For anything more than that, or if you're gonna be a consistently over 20 pounds base weight or full weight, I should say, then I would honestly look into a full frame pack, which Light AF also sells with the same exact features, same colors, same everything. Let's talk materials first. So when you think of ultralight fabrics, an acronym typically comes to mind, and that's DCF, right or Dyneema composite fabric, which is what makes up the core fabric for strength. Then it's usually laminated with an outer layer like polyester for abrasion resistance. Ultimately, this end product is called DCH or Dyneema composite hybrid. Now, many backpack vendors are switching over to ultra fabrics, which is very similar to DCH. Long-term usage of DCH packs show wrinkles as they age where ultra fabrics will typically look like new. Both fabrics are incredibly strong and packs made with ultra fabrics are within one to two ounces of their Dyneema counterparts. While DCH is just a smidge lighter, ultra is cheaper and easier to work with when it comes to sewing. Now this pack is made up of ultra 200 fabric. The side pockets are made of ultra grid stop and hold two water bottles comfortably or one smart water bottle and a small fuel canister. The front pocket is made up of an ultra stretch mesh. Finally, the shoulder straps thankfully haven't been changed and are still the same as shapes, spacer mesh, and closed cell foam. Okay, let's get into this review finally. Let's actually start with what I like about the pack. Light AF continues to have the most comfortable shoulder straps of any pack I've ever tried hands down. And Light AF, if you're watching this video, don't touch these ever. They are perfect, don't touch them. Where most backpack shoulder straps stop, these continue to wrap around the sides of your body. Now to me, this makes a heavier load feel more comfortable during the day. New this year is the addition of an adjustable shock cord over the shoulder strap pockets. This is done so when you lean over, uh, the, the stuff in those pockets don't just fall out, which was kind of a problem, but not a big problem on previous models. Now I use these pockets to hold my phone, headlamp, buff, snacks, bandana, pretty much anything I need to access while I'm hiking. Unfortunately, during the testing of this pack, one of the shock cord attachments broke off, like completely detached from the pack. When I contacted Light AF after my trip, he assured me that this issue had already been fixed in the future by reinforcing the stitch and lengthening the amount of cord that's attached to the pack. I did not have any problems with the second pocket though. Another new feature this year is the upper side pocket located right above the water bottle area. And initially I thought that maybe I'd use this for a tent stake bag, but 
As time progressed, man, putting my hygiene or my bathroom kit in this thing saves a lot of time from me digging around on the inside or on the outside mesh pockets. It was really, really nice to have this thing. And I think I will be getting this on all future packs from Light AF. You can also put your power bank in this little side pocket area, run the cable through your shoulder strap loops and charge your phone without any wires kind of getting in your face. So I'm assuming you can also use that to power a headlamp for night hikes as well. Just remember to take your power bank out of your pack before it starts raining. The new side or water bottle pockets design is higher in the back and lower in the front while being adjustable and it's great. I found that this makes the water bottle stay in place while moving way better compared to previous versions of this pack, especially for people like me that like to leave their filter attached to one of the water bottles, which raises its center of gravity. That always kind of bothered me and I'm incredibly happy it's fixed. The outside material is holding up great and I have not been babying this pack by any means compared to other previous models made of DCF. I wanted to really test this fabric as best I could this year and I have no holes or abrasion anywhere on the pack, including the bottom pocket, which I don't personally use it much, maybe to store some gloves every now and then. Uh, but I do plan on using this more as time progresses to kind of transition away from my trusted fanny pack, just to kind of mix things up a bit. On the interior of the pack, however, I did see some delamination above the shoulder straps, though it's odd with the placement because this area is not sewn or taped in any way. It's straight, unmodified ultra fabric. Now, in talking with Light AF about this, the manufacturer, Challenge Sailcloth, found that there was a bad batch of black Ultra 200 fabric in 2022 that possibly wasn't glued correctly. Now they've taken steps to correct this issue, include pulling all black fabric sold to all vendors like Light AF and replacing it with good Ultra 200 fabric. They also have recently phased out the Ultra fabric completely and replacing it with Ultra X, which is apparently manufactured a little bit differently and has an X grid pattern similar to X pack. The weight difference between these two fabrics is neg negligible, but I'm hearing that it's more durable somehow as well. Now I had a couple days of rain on my last trip and I, even with the delamination, I didn't find any water had gotten into the pack. The seam taping seems solid and possibly even better than previous years. So while the pack can be considered nearly waterproof, I still and will always recommend that anybody that has a backpack should get a pack liner to protect your important gear. Moving on to what I don't like about the pack. So the back pocket, it's ultra stretch mesh and it's anything but ultra stretchy compared to the old Light F Lycra spandex pocket. Now, I tend to put a decent amount of stuff in here and really I, I just found the back pocket limiting. I mean, I throw everything from my tent to rain jacket to tent stakes to garbage bag. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, but I did find it limiting. So I talked with Chris about this, the, the owner of Light AF, and he came up with a new pleated design that's been added to all uh, future packs. Now, this pleat in the ultra mesh will add to the volume in the pocket while keeping uh, objects secure. So in all honesty, I can probably take this off my dislikes list because with the ultra stretch mesh, it's much more durable than the Lycra spandex. So I guess I can't complain. I wanna go back to the shoulder strap pockets here, cause this is a, a bit of a concern for me. It's not nothing major. I mean, even if you break your cord like I did, the pocket still works great, it's fine. Uh, they used to have a little band of elastic up here and I thought that even worked really well. Uh, but I wanna direct your attention to the water bottle pockets here. Now the way this works is there is a pull tab, a cord lock, and a piece of shock cord run through a sewn channel and then out to a grommet where it's tied. It's just simply tied. So if this would ever break, right, I could just take the shock cord out, feed new shock cord into the sewn channel, and I could have my adjustability back on this pocket. So I could technically, I could, you know, if I'm on a long through hike even, I could potentially just order some shock cord and just send it to wherever I'm at nearest post office. Now, on the shoulder strap pocket, it works kind of the same. We have the grommet here and the cord lock. And then there's a sewn channel. And then the problem that I think was made is, you know, here's the cord lock that broke. The cord is sewn into the pack somewhere around this area right here, I, should, I guess I would say. Somewhere around this, this top area, if I had to guess. 
why not just copy <laughs> this exact little grommet thing that they have here with the little Grogan and put it right here. That way it's still user replaceable. So in future packs, I would definitely like to see that, uh, that done. Now, like I said, he, the owner, Chris from Light AF said it was fixed. So I'm sure there's not gonna be any problems, but just in case, let's just take any kind of potential problem out of the equation and possibly let's add that. I'm gonna talk to him about that, see if he's willing to give it a try. And maybe we'll see it on the next upcoming pack, but I think that's a great idea. Let me know your thoughts. Finally, the compression straps of this pack. Even though they were redesigned this year, I still feel like they just don't add compression to an already small width pack. Light AF packs are taller and less wide than your average pack, which is another reason why I love them. You can simply probably cut these compression straps and line lock adjusters off the pack with little to no effect uh, if you want to. But personally, I leave them on because they do serve one great purpose, and that's to store my trekking poles in my water bottle pockets so that they're easier to travel with. If you slide the trekking pole underneath of these compression straps, they're, it's, it's, it's a perfect system. All right, so in closing, there are good and bad things about this one. Most of the bad has already been addressed by Light AF in their mid-year models. And it's the quick response from the hiking community that keeps me confident in Light AF's future. So not only is Light AF not afraid to try new things, but they're also willing to adapt and adapt quickly when things aren't quite right. So if you have any questions about this pack, please let me know down in the comments and let me know what you think of my concerns and offer any feedback or ideas you may have. As always, I'm Frozen. Thanks for watching and find time and go on your own adventure. I'll see you on the trail, everybody.